Okay, so I have a little uh, slightly different video today um, to show you. Uh, I'm going to try to make this quick since I'm really a long-winded speaker. Uh, I like beer. I like craft beer. My friends and I go drinking to go explore new beers. A lot of my friends do craft or homebrewing, I guess. Homebrewing would be the right term. Uh, and I thought it'd be fun to try it out. Um, Partially, it'd be fun to actually come up with different beer flavors and learn about the flavors and yada yada. And because you get to drink it. Uh, but for me, the biggest reason I kind of want to do it is because it's a, a really good source for a lot of cool projects. Uh, I noticed with homebrewing, if you go to homebrewing websites or forums, there's just tons of homebrewing related projects. There's a little bit of everything. There's some electronics, there's some mechanical builds, uh, there's some fluid related stuff, solenoids. <laughs> Heating elements, solid state relays, I mean, just some really, really cool beer brewing related projects. So I was going to make a fermentation chamber. Uh, well, okay, let me back up a step. I bought a one-gallon kit from Northern Brewery. Um, they make one-gallon kits so you can just brew really small batches, and it's cheaper, and then you can just kind of find out if you think you might want to do it before you go big scale, you can try it just with little one gallon kits. So you ferment it in a thing called a carboy, and the one that comes to this kit, like I said, is a gallon. So it's like a one gallon glass jug. And fermentation involves yeast, and it's got really, really specific temperatures that it needs. So, uh, so basically, fermentation uh, requires you to keep the temperature within a really tight temperature range. So I think ales are like 50, 60 degrees, something like that. And then I think it's lagers that are like 30 to 40 degrees or a lot. They require a much colder uh, fermentation. Probably not 30. That'd be below freezing. Uh, and I'm speaking in terms of Fahrenheit, by the way. Uh, I could have had that backwards or be completely wrong. But it's, it's something like that. You got to keep the temperature pretty precise. Uh, and so what, what a lot of people do, they take the, they go the easy route, they buy uh, a mini fridge, a cheap PID controller from eBay, and then a solid state relay, and then they just have the PID controller uh, switch the mini fridge on and off to control the temperature of the carboy sitting on the inside, along with the probe that plugs into the uh, PID controller that you buy from eBay. You can get them for like, I don't know, 10 to 20 bucks on Amazon or eBay. Uh, and that's kind of the easy route, a lot less involved, no code required, uh, no circuit design, you know, it's just kind of buy a couple things and then you just hook it up. Not as fun. If I go bigger scale, I'll probably do that anyways because it's a lot more efficient than going the route I'm going to do for my small scale one. I'm going to go with Peltiers. They're only like 5% efficient versus refrigerant ones like a mini fridge. Uh, those are like, I think, 50 to 60% efficient up to probably more like 40 to 60. I don't know. Uh, by the way, for small scale, I thought it'd be fun to use uh, Peltiers. They're solid state. There's no moving parts. They're super simple. They're not that efficient, but if I insulate the thing well enough, once I get the temperature down to where I need it to be, it doesn't even matter, you know. Um, it'll just require a little bit of power here and there to maintain the temperature, but that's that's really it. And then I thought I'd go ahead and do something cooler, uh, do Peltier Cascade, and I'm not going to get into the details, but it should be pretty cool. And I'm going to involve... Uh, yeah, I, I won't get into that. <laughs> that's I'll save that for another video, uh, some details of what I think I'm going to do. But anyways, I built a really small scale, like shoebox-sized test rig where I built it out of insul pink foam insulation. And uh, I built it out of pink foam insulation and uh, basically put the cold side heat sink on the inside and then the hot side heat sink on the outside and then the Peltier just pumps heat from the inside to the outside so the inside gets colder. Uh, it's really simple. I used just two of the literally the cheapest heat sinks I could find at Micro Center. They were like $5 a piece, I think. Super cheap. Uh, so they're not that great, to be honest. But even then, uh, I was able to get the temperature 40 below ambient after I fixed my little oversight. And that's what this whole video is about, is the little oversight that I found. Uh, some people out there might catch this before they finish finish their uh, prototype. I didn't see it because I was so excited to get this thing slapped together, to throw the heatsink on it, and then get it hooked up, get an Arduino get my multimeter temperature probe, start doing some measurements and getting some data. I was really excited and just completely overlooked such a simple little thing that made such a big impact. Uh, the original version, which had the problem, the little oversight, um, it would only get 10 below ambient and I could not figure out what the deal was. 
and then I figured it out, and then I fixed it, and then I was able to get 40 below ambient. But it's such a simple, tiny, tiny little thing. So uh, basically what I have here and what you're seeing, uh, it's two pieces of foam insulation, and then I put two strips of foil tape. I think it's aluminum foil tape on both sides. So it's covering the majority of the surface on the top and the bottom. On the top, however, I also put black duct tape on top of that because uh, the foil tape is metal, it's reflective, it reflects IR, and I don't know if you've ever tried to take an infrared thermometer measurement of foil or any metallic surface, it just doesn't work. And same with thermal imaging camera, it just, <laughs> all you see is the stuff reflected off of it uh, as far as IR. So um, to fix that, I just put black duct tape over it. So that way, um, when I get the thermal imaging camera out, when we do this experiment, you'll be able to see very easily what's going on. So that's all that is. So basically, both pieces of foam are like 99% identical. There's just one little tiny difference between the two, which is the oversight. The one on the right has this oversight that I speak of. But either than that, both, both pieces have aluminum foil tape on both sides and black tape on the top. Uh, so on the bottom, the the black thing is just a piece of metal I'm using so I don't burn um, my workbench's ESD mat because this stuff's pretty expensive and I just don't want to risk it. So basically I have the piece, the black piece of metal and then I have the Peltiers and then directly on top of the Peltier I have uh, the two pieces of foam. So it's basically Peltier and then the foil tape on the bottom side of the foam and then the foam. Uh, and then I got them plugged into their each plugged into their own channel on my Rigol power supply, and I have them set to 12 volts at 3.2 amps, which is the max that my supply is able able to source or supply. But that doesn't matter. I don't need to run it up to the full 6 amps that these Peltiers are rated at because they'll get extremely hot due to the fact that I don't have any sort of heat sink on them. I mean, it's just other than the two strips of foil tape on the back, there's nowhere for the heat to go. And the cold side is what's actually touching the piece of metal. So... This will get hot really quick, trust me. And so uh, all I'm going to do is basically I'll stand up, I'll adjust the microphones, you can hear me while I'm standing, and I'm going to turn both Peltiers on, and then we will, uh, you'll be get to see video through the uh, thermal camera, and then we will see what happens. And then afterwards I will explain what the difference is, if you couldn't already guess. All right, so I've got the temperature gun on, and now we are going to fire this thing up. And by the way, if you notice that there's no audio other than my voice, it's because when I originally recorded this, uh, the microphone was turned the wrong way. It's both sides of the microphone look identical, but one side does not pick up sound and it's designed to cancel all their noise out. So anyways, here we go. Both channels turned on and now we are viewing this through the infrared imaging camera. And as you can see on the right side, despite being identical on the right side, is getting hot for some reason at the center. And there's no hole in the center, I promise you. There's no holes, there's no screws or anything. It's solid piece of foam all the way through. And they're both being driven by the same Peltier, the same voltage and current. As you can see, the left one is staying cool because it's insulation, and that's what the insulation does, it's doing its job. But on the right side, the top is getting extremely hot so hot that it's actually showing up white like which is at the top of the scale and I mean this has only been on for mere seconds so can you guess what the difference is between the left two it's uh, the materials are all 100% identical same foam cut from the same sheet same tape from the same rolls the left side you can start to see that a little bit of heat starting to saturate through the foam but not very much and that's because foam is really insulating and that's it's doing its job great Slight oversight on the right side is uh, causing heat to uh, soak through to the other side. And I'm sure it's pretty obvious you guys have probably already figured it out. But uh, let's take a look. Okay, so I decided that before I gave away the difference, um, to give you one last chance to guess it, and this will be a lot more obvious, and since you're actually looking for it, I'm pretty sure pretty much everyone watching this will figure it out. Uh, I made this tiny little mock-up. My actual test rig is over there, and it's much, much bigger. It's probably five times the size. Uh, I made this just for this video. I'm probably going to throw this away after this video. This is just to demonstrate the little tiny fatal uh, oversight 
So uh, this will be one last chance for you to guess, and I'm pretty sure everyone will uh, guess it. So the entire thing is made out of the same pink foam, and I'm just holding it together using foil tape. So, you know, with a lid on there that fits like this, it's airtight. And then, you know, foil reflects IR, so if it's cold on the inside, and uh, IR heat out here just gets reflected off it, and the inside stays nice and cool, right? According to theory. But there's a little oversight, so I don't know if you've seen it. And it has nothing to do with the air tightness of the lid because of my full-size one. This is the, the top lid to that. This is the... Uh, the gasket that I use, it's it's latex foam that I cut. So uh, it's one on my full size rig. I put a heavy weight on top of here, and then this is sandwiched between the lid and the bottom. So it's actually airtight. So that's not the fatal flaw. So I imagine most of you have guessed it by now, but if not, um, I will show you. Okay, so time for the reveal. Here are the two same pieces. This is the one with the flaw. This is the one that isn't. Still see a difference? You probably don't, but I'm going to show you now. See that little slit? There's a cut, and I cut all the way down to about here, and then I took a piece of foil tape. Uh, of course I get a piece that won't stand up on its own, and then I, I put the foil tape through so it goes from one side to the other down to about the middle, and then you know, put the tape down on the surface. So I don't know if you can see through here. Yeah. You can see right here, the foil tape comes out the middle and uh, I have it coming over to this side. And then on this other side, you should be able to see right, just a little ledge right there where the foil tape is coming from uh, the other side. But I mean, other than that, it's airtight. I pushed, when I put the tape on, I, I, I really wish I would've used the uh, tripod. Um, when I put the tape on, I, I pulled both sides together and put the tape on it. So, I mean, that foam is essentially like it doesn't have a little slit cut in it. The only difference is that piece of foam going through to the other side. Uh, and that tiny, and that, I mean, this foam is super, super thin. I mean, it is really thin. But it's aluminum. Aluminum, aluminum is, is somewhat decent at uh, conducting heat. And it's wicking heat from the hot side out to the cold side on the outside. Um... And uh, as you saw, I mean, it heated up almost instantly. You could instantly see the side getting hot. And so I'll show you. Uh, it's basically we, that little piece that went through the cut that I uh, put in there is the same thing as this foil going from the inside to the outside, despite it basically being airtight. So uh, despite that being super, super, super thin, you know, measured in the order of microns, thick uh, is wicking heat from the inside to the outside despite it being airtight. So basically the inside, if let's, um, <laughs> for the sake of making this easier to explain, let's just say we're heating the inside. So the foil on the inside gets hot and then the heat wicks through to the outside through this foil on the top here because the inside foil and the outside foil is completely connected. It's, it might as well be one giant piece which means the heat goes to the outside, and look, the outside is basically one giant freaking heat sink. So that was basically what the problem was, and uh, a lot of you probably would have noticed that, especially since you're looking for it. I'm sure in this video you would have guessed it, but just, you know, I was excited to do the project, slapped it together, and totally did not even think about that until I touched it after it had been running for 10 minutes and noticed the outside felt really suspiciously cold. Uh, compared to ambient. I know metallic things usually feel cool, but I mean that felt really cold and I was like, what in the hell? And as soon as I opened the lid, I just immediately saw what the problem was and thought, oh geez. And yeah, that took a lot of work to fix it. So let me show you. So this is my full size test rig. Uh, it's the same thing. It's just an Amazon box and then I uh, cut foam to line every single uh, side of this box with the foam. And there's the lid, and then I just cut some latex foam to act as a gasket. And then when I put the lid on it, I put something heavy on top of the lid to make sure it's completely airtight, no air is getting in or out. And it works pretty well. But, as you can see, I have now gone back and removed the foil that connects the inside to the outside. And same here. The foil up here can't bridge across to the outside foil because I removed it. So now, there's truly only insulation between the inside and the outside. So uh, no more of that heat wicking and leaking out business. 
and I did it to the whole thing. So, uh, yeah, pretty ridiculous, huh? Such a tiny little thing that'd be really easy to overlook <laughs> ends up biting you. But anyways, it was an easy fix, and, you know, I, I went from uh, 10 below ambient to 40 below ambient just from this tiny little fix. So, yeah, uh, I hope everyone out there, or at least someone, found it interesting, and uh, I thought I would demonstrate it, so maybe it'll save someone else some headache and time. And plus, it's kind of a cool little demonstration to see that, you know, even the tiniest little bit of conductor can uh, conduct and wick heat out of your project or out of your, you know, controlled environment and escape out past your insulation. And all it took in this case uh, was a little tiny strip of foil tape going through the middle to the outside. So, yeah, pretty cool. And, uh... See you for the next video.